Hey everybody, there's my phone number on my website. So, here we have another Kenwood TL922. So, the top looks okay, so I'm going to go over the bottom. I just broke. Oh, actually, it's like he had it super glued or something. So, it's not how you're supposed to put that kit in. Anyway, that's a, a soft key kit. So, this thing uh, looks like it had someone change. Looks like someone changed the band switch at some point. Uh, looks like it arced down there. Looked at the contacts already. They look okay. Actually, it looks like it arced from the padding cap lead down to the lead that goes to the coil for the output network. And there's some carbon on the uh, material for the um, the band switch. So I'm gonna have to clean that off really well. Someone did the 10 meter mod, they did kind of a shoddy job, I'll have to fix that. Uh, looks like he has a bad tube, ferrite is broken here. The These tubes are in series, so this choke goes back to the center tap of the filament transformer, you could tell it's heated. One of the tubes probably had to grit the filament short, that choke got so hot that it heated up the filament lead right here, the red wire. This is probably the bad tube, I'm guessing. Look at the choke, it's all congealed. It's gonna heat it up pretty pretty good. So I'm gonna pull the tubes out, gotta check the filament transformer. I'll change that electrolytic first. I always do that in case it's shorted. I don't wanna damage it during the test. Uh, having a shorted fill, uh, cap here, uh, that can actually damage that winding on the transformer, because that that's for the a circuit that rectifies that winding and that like I said before powers the two relays this relay and this relay over here and also puts the tubes in the cutoff for the forced bias circuit I changed it over to a self bias circuit so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tubes change that cap and make sure the transformers okay and then I will, as long as that's okay. Oh, someone also put the 47 puff cap over, uh, it's in the wrong spot. It's on the padding, one of the padding caps on the plate tune side, so I'll have to remove that. So you can see it's blown apart. Someone, yeah, someone definitely changed the switch. Look, they hit this with the soldering iron. And also over here. Hit it with the soldering iron. Someone's changed this choke before. Okay, so I'm going to get to work and I will be back. See you soon. Okay, so I missed two things. You know, this is what happens when you bring something to someone that really doesn't know what they're doing. They totally messed up on the band switch. The side where the plate tune patterns are switched in. They jumped all the connections together. It's just totally wrong. So, it's going to need a new band switch. This one's just totally boogered up. I, I can't, you know, undo it and then send it to the customer. It, it's going to end up having an issue. So, it's not it's not a factor replacement one, you know, like a stock one, nor is it a aftermarket one from Multitech. So, someone found one and they put it in. So, okay. It also needs a new fan. When I turned it on to check the filament transformer, this thing is like super slow. It does not provide enough CFMs to the tubes it, it's just a, not adequate whatsoever so it's going to need a new fan everything else is done I'll zip tie all of this and these wires someone's been in here too but anyway I'll be back once I have those parts and uh, I'll see you soon there's my, for now, there's my phone number again and my website. Hey everybody, I'm back with the Kenwood TL922. So here's the old band switch. You can see someone really screwed up here. 
arced here. So took it out, put a new one in. Took a little bit because the guy boogered it up so bad. Waiting on this 47 puff cap. It was installed, like I said before, in the wrong spot. So it goes from ground here, here to here. I've seen these without them, some with, most with, some without. Sometimes I put it here, sometimes I put it over here, but for some reason I've seen them without it. So, okay, so the guy uh, made a connection between, you know, you're supposed to have the connection between the loading capacitor and the band switch, and it was all screwed up in a cold solder joint, and he had soldered that little nub down there of a tab. So I tried taking a screw out, and it just spun, spun, spun. I couldn't actually pull it out, and I was lucky to get it to re-engage. So what I did was, when I went to tighten it, I'm, I'm lucky I got it to grip, to grab. I ended up soldering directly to the cap because it, those screws go through this material right here anyway. So I got it really hot, and I soldered right to the plate. Solid copper wire. And I put some Teflon over it, and it's not touching ground, but I put Teflon over it just in case. So it's just slightly longer, just a, maybe a quarter inch. So, so the connections are good. All that's good. So just need to replace the fan and that cap, like I said before. I'll put the side cover back on, and uh, I'll test it, but it should be good. Hey, I'll be back. Okay, everybody, I'm back with the completed TL922 amplifier here. So I'll go over everything I did quickly. So I had to replace meter lamp bulbs somewhere out, so some of the wires were all burnt up. Someone went in here with a soldering iron, just just was very, very sloppy, burnt the insulation on a lot of, a lot of the wiring. So cleaned all that up. Place the bad bulbs, everything zip tied, put the series glitch resistor in, zip tied the wiring, everything's spaced properly down there. Put the strap in between the plate choke and the plate blocking cap and remove the tubes. This got a brand new Penta uh, Labs set of tubes and I got rid of those U-shape parasitic suppressors. Uh, <laughs> they weren't made right, uh, the resistors already had shown some heating. So I put the stock assemblies back in. Air variables nice and clean. Got the brand new rotary switch in. I'll show that when I flip it over. So everything looks good over here. So I'll go ahead and flip it over. I'll be right back. Oh, also wanted to point out I put in the meter protection diode. I always do that. Saves you from taking out the plate current meter. If you have a short, also zip tied the wiring over here. Okay, be right back. Okay, I'm back with the bottom here. So I grounded the grids the proper way. Self bias modification. Check the SO239 connectors. As you can see, someone you know went in here with their soldering iron. Like I was talking about, they burnt the insulation on a lot of the wiring. But you know, so change the rotary switch. You know, the band switch. Installed a new 47 PF cap. It was installed in the wrong spot. I've seen these with them, without them, but I went ahead and installed it. So, so usually it's from this point, from the common connection to the rotary switch to the ground. I installed it over here to keep the leak lengths nice and short. I've also seen it located over here on the TR relay, which is the same point. Um, you know, the center of the coax can, of, of the uh, coax goes to the TR relay, connects to that same point there, which is at the same potential is this over here. So connects back to the air variable on the load side. So I had to redo the 10 meter modification. He used the wrong mica caps and the lead lengths were way too long plus super sloppy solder joints. So I ripped all that out, redid it. Put new mica, mica caps in, check the Zener diode, that's all set. Added the strap. So added also changed the electrolytic. I always do that. So I removed that uh, aftermarket soft key. It wasn't a hard box kit. It was uh, a different kit. And um, 
you know, it was it, it wasn't keying all the time, and I've seen where those kits have failed, where it's actually taken out the winding on the transformer. The customer has an ARB box, so he's going to use that. He has he owns this amp and the Heath kit, so I said to him, "Look, you know, I can install it. I can order the Harbach kit and and uh, assemble a kit and install them in both amplifiers, or you, know, you can just use the ARB box per amp. You know, then it'll end up saving him money, and you know." He opted to, to save money, so he didn't have to pay me to purchase the kits, assemble the kits, and install the kits. So, I love making money, but, you know, I also uh, like being honest. I prefer being honest over making money. So, so this thing's all set. There's my phone number and website. If you have an amplifier you need repaired, feel free to give me a call. Uh, this amp, uh, the Heath kit, and two other amplifiers are leaving this week, so I will have a lot of room here on the bench to finally get hardcore into the 3CX6000, so I will be posting videos of that. Lots of progress on that. So, stay tuned. Take care. AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119.